everybody. This is Dawn and Pam from the Quilters Workshop in Loveland. One of the most frequent questions we get from our renters and all of our quilters, mm -hmm. and something we mess up ourselves once in a while, is how to put the leads on properly. So what we want to do with this video is leave you with a better friendship established with your leads. So how do you make friends? Well, you find out more about them. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's talk a little bit about the details that you will see on your leads at home. First of all, know that your leads are exactly the same. Only one is numbered number one and one is numbered number two. And you always have arrows that are pointing to the right. Now, number one says bottom on it, it's the boss. Think of number one as the boss. It sets the direction each time. And number two needs to follow suit. So, You'll notice when you get your leads set up that each of your zippers has one of these connectors on it. Now, you might say, whoa, mine don't look like that. Yours might have two of these on it, and that's okay. We're going to talk about the difference. Dawn's going to spend a few minutes today talking to you about loading your back onto the actual rolls on the quilt machine, and she'll talk about the difference between those. So don't worry about that. I'm gonna do a little Eleanor Burns tribute here and say, looking good. So we talk a lot in the shop about when we're making a sandwich. And when you make a sandwich with your quilt, the three key pieces of your quilt, your back, your top, and your batting, when you do that at home, you would always put your right side down first. And that is the same premise you use when you're loading and putting your leads on. So if you look at this backing, you'll see that it's a rectangle. So one of the things you want to think about is this is a rectangle. Your quilt's a rectangle. Which end should you put your leads on? Well, that's up to you. If you feel that your quilt doesn't have a right side or a wrong side as far as horizontal or vertical, it doesn't matter. And we would suggest then that you put your leads on the longest side. Because if you attach your leads to the longest side of your backing, that'll make the quickest work of your project. So what you do, I've decided now that this is a rectangle quilt. I want to finish as fast as I can. So my top and bottom are going to be on the long side. So the first thing I'm going to do is fold my evenly cut backing and I'm going to mark my two center points. I'm going to mark the center of my top with one pin. And I'm going to mark the center of my bottom with another pin. And you'll notice that Pam has taken the time to square up her back. This is going to give her the best results for her quilt. She's not going to have to really worry about any pleats. And she's still going to have to check for them but she's gonna get a much better product in the end, starting square. Remember we talked, when we first looked at our leads, one thing I forgot to, to focus on was this center line, that's your center point. It's really important to honor the center. You don't want your back to be crooked because then your quilt gets crooked. So honor that center point, begin with number one, and bottom always goes by your feet. So we put that center point down, Voila, proper placement. Now this is my quilt so I can walk on it. You grab number two, walk across your quilt, lay down number two, done. So now if you look at this, you'll see both of your arrows are pointing to the right. Number one on the bottom, number two on the top. We've honored the center point. Now all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take and put one pin to the left of the center, one pin to the right. Okay, and now you wanna do the same on number two, just a pin on either side. Oh, okay. So the, the main thing you wanna remember is you're gonna do this these steps no matter how big or small your quilt is because you always wanna match up the center points. Okay, the next step is to actually sew this. So we're gonna move over to the sewing machine now. Okay, the next thing is now we've moved to the machine. Now we have here on our Juki machine, we keep our um, baster on four. This is uh, more of an industrial machine than you probably have at home. So it stitches nice and big. So we would encourage you to use the biggest stitch you have. 
So it doesn't matter which one you start with when you're sewing them. I've got number two in my hand. But again, we want to honor that center point. So I would simply sew from the center to the end and we say about a quarter of an inch. And see how nice it is when it's straight. Okay, and if you sew off a little bit, that'll help keep it attached. So now all I'm gonna do is come back and you just flip it over, start at the center again. And this way that center point truly remains in the center. And do the same on the other one. See why I wouldn't waste any time pinning this off. But again, that's up to you. Just make sure you use your big stitch because this is going to come out. And after you've quilted a long time, you'll get a lot of um, pieces of broken thread on the ends of your leads. And it makes good sense to clean those off every once in a while because they do get down in the machines. Okay, so. Just to show you, this is all done. Number one is sewn. And number two is sewn. And they're ready for you to have some fun quilting.